Praise the Lord, everyone. I uh, want to thank you for joining us today. And yeah, it's pre Friday, it's Thursday, so I uh, hope you guys have had a blessed and wonderful week. And um, yeah, so today's, uh, today's speaker, uh, he's bringing us a, an amazing, an amazing um, lesson, an amazing word. And we hope that uh, we receive this and uh, uh, it can change us and that we learn from it. I mean, there's always, always room to learn. So uh, before we begin, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank God for allowing us to be here in communion with everyone. And I want to start off with the prayer. So where you're at, please uh, bow your heads. And if you're driving, keep your eyes open. So uh, let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to come before you today. We want to thank you for allowing us to be here. And we want to thank you for allowing us to participate in another um, day to, to spread your name, spread your gospel, and spread your word, Lord. We ask you that you use the speaker today and that you give us an open mind and an open heart, Lord, to, to receive the message and that we may use it later. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, Without further ado, I would uh, like to introduce our speaker today, Brother Bobby Tinoco. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. How are you? Doing pretty good, man. I, I, I know I told you a bit earlier, but I'm going to tell you again, I love your headphones. Purple. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I love purple. Favorite color. That's right. So, yeah, uh, brother, if you, if you, uh, if you want to give us a little bit about yourself. All right. Uh, my name is Bobby Tinoco. I am the pastor's son here in the Church of Homestead. Um, 27 years old. Recently got engaged, so that's a big, big thing. Um, work with the youth. We work with the church. Obviously, being a pastor's son, uh, we, we help out in everything that we can in the church. Um, and uh, yeah, we're here to speak the word of God, and it's a big blessing, a big honor for me to be here and uh to be invited to speak to you guys it, i really i'm really honored amen congratulations on the the engagement that's awesome thank you bro that's um, awesome between us and everybody else that's watching i'm not one that's really big on getting nervous but when i asked my hands were i was trembling bro <laughs> non-stop <laughs> i could not stop it's a it's a different experience pretty scary yeah <laughs> so yeah I, I know the i know the feeling yeah congrats <laughs> yeah thank you thank you but um <clears throat> it's probably too too soon for a wedding right or you're still planning uh <laughs> in in some cases i'm like you know what maybe covid should last so that way we don't have to spend so much on a wedding oh yeah <laughs> but i love people and and uh, i would love to have as many as i can down there with us that's awesome yeah well, brother, uh, without further ado, man, the, the screen is yours. Amen. Thank you. So the message that God has placed in my heart today, it's something that um, we've heard a lot about and we've read it. If we read the Bible, we've read it a lot in the Bible. Uh, and it's something that I think we need to reflect on, especially in the times that we're living in now. And, and the theme is altars. Um, we're going to have a couple of points real quick. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the purpose for the altar, why God establishes an altar and why we in our everyday life need an altar. The second point that we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about different altars. Um, I'm, I'm of the opinion or the mindset that uh, especially in church and when we bring a message, we need to know exactly where we can apply it in our life, not just bring a message and, and that's it, you know, you just hear the word and, and you don't apply it. Um, I'm big on you bring the message and you apply it. And then the last thing that we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about restoring the altar. Uh, so the verse that we're gonna base everything off of is Deuteronomy chapter 27, and we're gonna read verses five through six. So Deuteronomy 27, verses five through six. And the word of God says, and there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use an iron tool on them. You shall build with whole stones the altar of the Lord your God and offer burnt offerings on it 
to the Lord your God. So I know we, we already prayed to begin. Uh, I would like to do a small prayer just so we can enter into the word. Uh, so if you're watching, I would like for you to bow your head. We're going to come before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you this moment, Lord. We thank you for having us here. Thank you for choosing us, your servants, Lord, to be able to do this and work in your kingdom, God. I ask that every person that is watching, you can open up their mindset, their hearts to this word, God. That you use me as your servant, Lord, to speak your word. And that you be exalted through everything that we do, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I talk a lot, so let me know when. It's all, it's <laughs> you know, all good. <laughs> okay, good. Good, because the people here at church, uh, homestead people will tell you, like, if I get started, it's very hard for me to stop. <laughs> so I want to begin by, by saying that everybody builds an altar in their life. In, in our everyday life and in everything that we do, uh, we have altars, and sometimes we don't realize it. And it's interesting because we build altars because as human beings, we have a need to have something or somewhere to worship something. This is something that has been established from the beginning of time. And this is something that God establishes in us as his children. Uh, and the reason he establishes obviously so that we can worship him. Um, the thing that we have to bear in mind is that at times the altars that we build sometimes aren't aligned with the will of God. You know, and, and what we're going to be talking about today, the objective of this this talk or this teaching is to show us and make us aware that uh, the altars that we build, right, there are, there are certain altars that we can build that might go against God. And at the same time, there are altars that we must have that were designed by God. And so to jump right on in, and the first point that we have is the purpose for the altars. Now, I kind of gave it away a little bit when I said that um, we were created to worship. You know, this is something that throughout the scriptures, uh, the Bible repeated to us time and time again, that we were created as God's children to worship him, right? Uh, somewhere along the lines, and, and obviously with the way that um, humanity works and, and people that haven't heard about God or have heard and, and decide to not follow him or people that just don't believe in God, you can always see that there is a need of them or there is a, a uh, movement that they have to worship something. It's not necessarily God, but sometimes they worship music. Sometimes they worship different people. Sometimes, you know, even people can worship jobs or, or certain types of shoes or clothing. Uh, it, it's something that is born inside of us as human beings. Uh, we have this inner desire and this inner need to worship something. And God creates the altars so that way we as his children might have a designated place to worship him. Right? Uh, many times we, we talk about the altar as being at you know you're at church and it's that place in front where well before covid you would go and you would pray and the pastor the ministers would pray for you and many times we have that conception that the altar is just that but if we go throughout the bible and and we look an altar is something that is deeper than just that obviously in those times they didn't have temples or churches like we had now you know they didn't have a carpet or a nice wooden floor or nice tiles where you would go and kneel down and, and spend you know 15 20 minutes praying to god in that time the altar was something that that was individual somebody had to build it for themselves it wasn't a a building that you would go to and that was it you know we see that uh throughout the bible god has an encounter with people and when he talks to them, he tells them uh, about building an altar or having altars, right? So in, uh, I'm not going to enter into too much verses, but one that I want to speak of is Numbers 23, verse 4. It says, and God met Balaam, right? And Balaam said to God, I have prepared the seven altars, and I have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. So we see here that this guy, Balaam, Right. He speaks to God. They meet together. He speaks to him and he tells him, look, I have prepared the altars. Right. We 
you know, we can talk about um, Abraham when he built the altar to sacrifice Isaac. We can talk about different altars that were built in different periods of time, right? So the altar is a place of encounter with God. The altar is a place where we come to worship God. And, and the altar comes to be a place where we offer a sacrifice to God. And that leads me to my second point, right? We know now what the altar is, right? The purpose for it, right? And we have to understand that there are different types of altars, right? In our time, obviously, we don't have a stone altar where you, know, you take a little lamb, you sacrifice it, and you can make barbacoa or something like that. That's not, you know, that's not how it works nowadays. Um, but the altars that we have now are something that is internal. It's something that is inside of us. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the altar of sacrifice. I mentioned that the altar in the olden times were used as a place of sacrifice. And, and that's something that applies even now to our time. Now, um, I, I want to mention that the word offering you're giving is it's interesting and curious because the, offering, the word offering is used about 2,000 times in the Bible. So it's something that the Bible mentions and God talks about a lot. He talks about offering and he talks about giving, right? And like I said, in our time, we can't obviously sacrifice a goat or sacrifice a cow or sacrifice a dove. That's not something that we do. But there are things that in, our, in our everyday life that we can sacrifice. And in our life, in our altars, we have to be willing to sacrifice certain things. Now, what are things that we can sacrifice? Well, the first thing that we can sacrifice is our time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the times we hear that, um, you know, I don't have time to go to church or I don't have time uh, to, to, to play an instrument. I don't have time to sing. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. And uh, I believe that the correct saying is, I haven't made time for it. I haven't made time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, because the reality is, we don't make time for it. We have 24 hours, you know, and and we have sufficient time. If we were to manage ourselves, we would, we would have enough time, you know, to do what we have to do in our everyday life, work and, you know, uh, home responsibilities and whatnot, you know, and we still have time to do other things. Now, we have to know how to manage our time. We have to maybe spend less time on YouTube or, or Instagram or TikTok, you know, and spend more time looking for God. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways that we can sacrifice our time. Instead of, you know, watching an hour-long video of the Declaration of Independence, I don't know, on YouTube, <laughs> right? Uh, we can spend that hour reading the Bible and meditating. on We can spend that time going to church and doing a work for God. We can spend that time uh, going into our neighborhoods, right, and speaking to, to people about God's love. That, that's one of the things that we can sacrifice. Right. The second thing that we can sacrifice, and I know a lot of people don't like talking about it, you know, but the second thing is we can offer up a sacrifice of money. Right. In our day and age, everything has a cost. Nothing is free in this world. You know? And and unfortunately, the church as well, the church has a need for money because it's with the money that we're able to have, for example, this uh, streaming software. Right? It's with money that we're able to pay for the electricity. It's with money that we're able to buy microphones and whatnot. And uh, that's one aspect. But at the same time, when we offer our money up to God, right? It, it's our offerings, it's our tithes, it's promises that we make to the Lord, our first fruits. And the reality is that when we offer something up to God, you know, and, and it's something common that people say, and it's that God never stays with anything. And that's, that's reality. I, I've noticed that the more that I am faithful in my tithes and the more I'm faithful in my offerings and my first fruits, right? God blesses. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. You know, it's when I least expect it, I'll get a raise at work or somebody gives me money or, or something happens, you know? And, and that's a sacrifice. We sacrifice our money and in, in reality, God pours out even more. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that we can sacrifice is our desire and this is something that it's very hard to talk about i think this is even more hard to speak about than money and it's hard because it's hard to tell a person hey look 
I know you like that person or I know you want that job or I know you want those shoes or you want to go here or go there, right? But sometimes the cost of following God is that we sacrifice our desires, mm. right? We hear the Bible tells us, you know, to, to bear our cross, you know, to leave our desires, to, to take up our cross and follow Jesus, you know? And that's something that is very hard, something that, that we fight a lot to, to do. And, and the reality is uh, sometimes we don't have this down pat. You know, we have time down, you know, we can give our time to God. You know, we can give our money to God. We can go to church, we can preach, we can sing, we can do this, we can do that. But then, you know, when it comes down to our desires, you know, we're like, you know, well, hold up, maybe, you know, I'm not, I don't know about that. You know, and, and one of the ways that I can put this into like a frame of reference is, you know, when it comes to college, right? It, I'm not saying that going to a faraway college is a bad thing because it's not. You know, if God has blessed you and you're able to afford going to a good college or an Ivy League school, you know, that's something amazing. That's something that you have to pursue. But at the same time, I, I if I'm not mistaken, I remember um, uh, the national president, Jacob Rodriguez, wrote that if you're going to leave, make sure there's an apostolic church nearby. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes we're quick to know i want to go to to harvard and we make sure we don't know we don't check if there's a church nearby you know and one of the things is you know it's hey you might not have you might you, you might not be able to go to harvard uh because there's nothing in the area that will help you in your christianity but maybe if you go to who, who knows ucla because there's apostolic churches on every corner in, in california we praise god you know, for that. Uh, but th those are things that we we don't pay attention to at times. You know, these are things that sometimes we, we neglect, you know, and again, we sacrifice our time, we sacrifice our money, but at times we don't sacrifice our desires, you know. And so the last thing uh, that I want to talk about on this, the altar of sacrifice, you know, and it's something interesting that Jesus says. He says in Matthew 10, uh, verse 37 and 38, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. You know, and this tells us something powerful. You know, this tells us that, you know, it doesn't literally mean, you know, neglect your mom, stop talking to your mom, stop talking to your dad, don't talk to your siblings anymore. But the emphasis that Jesus places on him being first, on us sacrificing those closest to us, those things that we love the most, you know, for him. So we have an altar of sacrifice. We also have an altar of praise. You know, this is something that in our everyday life we have to have. Um, as children of God, and I said earlier, we were created to worship, right? This is something that is born of us. And in our everyday life, we have to have an altar of praise and worship as well. Why? Because if we just worship Sundays or Wednesdays or whatever the midweek service is, uh, we're not going to be fed and we're not going to grow spiritually. You know, we we have a calling of God to worship. You know, the Word of God tells us that when we enter through His gate, it has to be with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and the Bible mentions praise and worship as well, not as much as offering, mind you, but it talks about worship and it talks about praise. You know, and we, as children of God, we were created to worship, right? And we're not going to enter into too much of this because I believe that this is something that we know how to do, right? We know how to praise and worship God, you know. And and the only thing that I'll say is uh, that God wants our worship to be something that is done in spirit and in truth the word of god tells us in john 4 24 that because god is a spirit right or god is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth right so what does this mean it's, it's simple right when we worship god in the spirit that means that it has to the flesh it, we're not just singing because we love to sing. we're not just you know praise breaking because we love to dance you know we're we're praising him in the spirit Right? It's something that passes the flesh, something that passes our desires, you know, and we worship God in the spirit by giving him what he is worthy of. Amen. Right? And then the second uh, part to that 
is that we worship God in truth. So in spirit and in truth, right? And that means that our praise has to be genuine, right? You know, we we have to understand what it is that we're singing or saying or or uh, ministering with. We have to know that. You know, if we, we sing the song, you know, how great is our God, and we don't believe that he's great, that that's just a song. You know, so when we worship God, it has to be something that passes the physical, the natural, right? Amen. And it enters the spiritual. And secondly, it has to be something genuine, right? And then the last altar that we have, right? And the last way that the altar was used is as a place of encounter, right? The altar is a place of encounter, right? There is a, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's a philosophist named Blaise Pascal. He writes, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each man, which cannot be satisfied by any created thing, but only by God the Creator made known through Jesus Christ, right? And this, this phrase is so powerful because it speaks to the reality of every human being, right? Every person has a vacuum in their heart. There's a hole in every person's heart that can only be filled by God. Mm -hmm. And the altar of encounter is where we have that encounter with God. That altar of encounter is where we go to meet our maker, where we go to meet our creator, where we go to find our purpose, where we go to meet up with our destiny. Right. It, it's, it's when we have God and when we encounter God and we have healing. Right. And, and this healing, we as apostolics, we believe in the supernatural healing, physical healing. But it, it also applies to the emotional, the mental, uh, the physical healing. These are something that that is healed and it is fixed when we encounter God. So we have to have an, an altar of encounter with God because it's there where we find our creator. It's there where that vacuum that we have is filled by God. So we have an, an altar of sacrifice, an altar of praise and an altar of encounter. And, uh, and those are all good. Those are all things that we have to have. But the reality is that sometimes we, we can fall into the same thing that happened to the children of Israel, that they build these, these false altars. They build these altars that go against the will of God. And believe it or not, uh, the altars that, that we have for God, the sacrifices, uh, praise and worship, and encounters, they can be corrupted and become a place of all sacrifice, where we sacrifice the things that we do for God, where we sacrifice the service that we do for God, where we sacrifice ministries, where we sacrifice prayers and fastings, where we sacrifice God himself, and we, we, we sacrifice that for things that look good, but in the long run, they, they can be hurtful and we can sacrifice the things of God for work, for mm. friendships, for relationships, for school and for, for, for different types of hobbies. And all these things are good. You know, Paul tells us the one that doesn't work will not eat. You know, uh, we, we obviously have to have relationships in our lives. You know, if we can go to school, we have to go to school. And obviously we have to have hobbies, you know, as a confession. And I explained to, you know, you Jesus, earlier that, you know, these big headphones are because I'm a gamer. You know, I love I love playing video games. That's a hobby of mine. But I can't change, you know, a Wednesday service for God. Uh, uh, you know, sorry, a Wednesday service for God for 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 playing Call of Duty. You know, that's not going to work. Because I, as a Christian, my responsibility is to sacrifice for God first, you know? So the altar of sacrifice can be corrupted and become a false sacrifice. Mm. The altar of praise and worship can also become an altar of false worship, where we worship things that are not God. And we have to understand that when we worship something that's not God, it's idolatry, right? The Word of God tells us we cannot worship uh, any any made image or anything that isn't God, you know, and maybe physically we're not bowing down to a statue or we're not bowing down to to a, you know, a picture or something, but we can be bowing down after celebrities where we become more concerned with what's going on mm. in their life 
than what's going on in our own churches. You know, we can fall into false worship when we're more concerned when that new speaker drops than we are at what time the service starts. You know, we can fall into this false worship where we start worshiping other things that exalt people or exalt us and don't exalt God. Amen. And the last thing is that if we have an altar of encounter, it can also be corrupted and become a place of a false encounter. You know, the same way that we build an altar, an altar, sorry, to have an encounter with God, when we're not careful, that altar can become a place of false encounter. You know, it doesn't mean that we're going to be possessed by a demon or the devil himself is going to come into us, you know, but this means that, you know, we said that this, this altar of encounter is where, you know, the void that we have for God is filled. And when it becomes a false encounter, that's when we try to fill that void with other things that are not God, where we try to fill it with drugs, we try to fill it with alcohol, we try to fill it with things that aren't pleasing to God, you know, and, and, and the reality is that we can fool everybody else, you know, that, that we're true Christians, but we can't fool God. Amen. You know, and, and, and God is looking for Christians today, you know, that have an altar. But, uh, and to start concluding, like I said, man, I, I talked a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, there's good news, man. There's good news. And the good news is that even if, Right now, we don't have these altars that I spoke of, or we have altars that aren't necessarily aligned with the will of God. You know, the reality is that we as human beings can change. You know, God has given us a great ability to change. You know, and there's also a saying, the, um, the person or the thing that doesn't change will die. You know, we as people uh, have been given that by God that we're able to change. You know, and if even though right now we might not have altars that are aligned with God, or we might have altars, but they're not like right at that level yet. The reality is that we serve a God who is merciful. We serve a God who is, who is uh, graceful, we, that he pours out his mercy and his grace upon us. The word of God tells us that his mercies are new every day. You know, the book of Lamentations tells us that because of his mercies, we are not consumed, right? that the mercies of God are new every morning and his faithfulness is great. So it's not too late for us to, to, to tear down the false altars, to tear down the false idols, you know, and, and turn back to God. You know, there's, there's story after story in the Bible where great men of God, you know, went out and destroyed the altars that were dedicated to Baal or dedicated to Ashtoreth which was another another God uh, that, that the people of Israel came to worship, you know. But they went out and they, they worked and they tore down the altars and established the new altar again for God. And that's the reality is that we have that ability today to be able to build these altars that please God and, and work at pleasing God with the altars that we have, you know. And, and I want to finish by saying it's not too late, man. You know, thank God that that his mercies are new every day. And it's not too late for us to restore and rebuild those altars, you know, and God wants us to do that. God wants us to have these altars because these altars are the place where we, we find him. These altars are the place where we can offer our sacrifice, our worship to God. And so today, and, and I and I finished, I promise I finished with this. You know, <laughs> today, young people, those that are watching this, right? It is not too late for you to build your altar to God. It's not too late for you to to build an altar that pleases God. You know, and I as a youth leader, and, and I don't know Jesus as a youth leader, Nacho and Loli there, any youth leader will tell you that our desire is that you grow in a relationship with God, that you become the person that God has destined you, that, that God has called you to be. You know, and again, I, I want to... Uh, finish by thanking you guys. Thank you for having me. This was, thank you. It's 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 a pleasure, man, and it's an honor for me to be here. Man, th thank you for for accepting and thank you for taking the time, because you know that's a sacrifice too. Yeah. So yeah. Th thank you for uh, for for being here. <clears throat> we got a, we got a question. Yes. It says, uh, how can we start building the altar after a long time of not? placing God first in our lives. 
Well, that's a very good question. So the answer that I can give to this is the same way that we can go through change. Every change begins with a little step, you know, and this is not, you know, rebuilding an altar is not something that happens overnight. You know, it's not something that we do right now. You know, we start today and then tomorrow it's finished. You know, if we have had a long time of not serving God or not looking for God, right, we can begin by a simple prayer. You know, we can begin by leaving certain things that don't please God. For example, uh, one of the things that, that affect us as Christians is, is worldly music. And the reason why I say this is because we surround ourselves by an environment that is not God. You know, it doesn't talk about God. It doesn't build us up. You know, so if we're doing that, maybe we can stop listening to certain songs or stop or start trying to leave that behind and start putting on music that pleases God or music that exalts God. And that's how we start the, the, these changes. We begin by starting uh, these, these little steps one by one. And that's awesome, Nelson. Yes, we do need to understand what we sing. That, that is of utmost importance, you know, but change begins with the little step. You know, and every little step is is progress. Doesn't matter whoever tells you, well, you're not there yet. You know, you haven't done it yet. You know, whatever. That doesn't matter, man. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're in this this race uh, to the finish line, which is you know making it to heaven, uh, uh, meeting our Creator. And it, we have to take it a step at a time. We have to take it a process at a time. And the important thing is that we start, right? We start one day, we start the next day, and we can choose to change so that was a good Amen. question um thank you for that question and also again that comment was, was was fire yes we need to understand what we sing oh yeah definitely um you you had mentioned uh time we need to learn how to manage our time because you know if we say we don't i don't have time for this there's like what you say you you said it's like the, the better the, the the thing to say it is i haven't made time yeah so like per perfect example of that is is uh my nephew you know, I'm, I get up at uh, around 6 in the morning, and one time I just got up and I heard a noise, so like I peeked in his room, and he's up. He's already up at 6 in the morning, like, doing homework. <laughs> doing homework. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, so I'm doing homework, so I, I, I have more time during the day. I was like, whoa. I was like, because when I was that age, I was like, I wasn't thinking about <laughs> waking up early, and yeah. but, I mean, he's up doing homework just so he can uh, have more time in the day. I'm like... That's that's a perfect example of managing time. Maybe we should wake up that early and. Bro, another one is like the gym. You know, we like I'm the perfect like example of this, man. I'm like I have to lose weight. I have to lose weight, <laughs> and then you know people tell me, hey, let's go to the gym. You know, nah, because yeah, <laughs> I don't want to wake up too early, or I just want to get home after work. But you know, we have if we want to lose weight, we have to make that that time to go to the gym or make that time to work out, even if we don't go to the gym, you know, run or ride a bike or something. Okay, now, 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 now I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm in the same boat, don't worry. Yeah, man. Um, Bobby, man, th this was great. Uh, I loved the, I loved it. It was awesome. Uh, I loved the specific things you, you said and how you, how you said it, man. It was, it was awesome. Praise so. God. Thank you for that. Thank you again for the, the privilege of being, being here. Amen, amen, brother. Uh, with that being said, man, uh, would you would you lead us into a, a closing prayer? Yeah, of course. So for everybody watching, except if you're driving, you know we have to make that that clear. You know, go ahead and bow your head, and if you're driving, just pray with your eyes open because it's still a prayer. Amen. Uh, but let's pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the word that we have heard. I I thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given me, God, for this generation and those that watch this, Lord. I ask that you bless every single person that has tuned in and every single person that will watch this after the fact. God, I ask that you be exalted in their lives, God. You be glorified in their lives, God, and that they can apply this lesson to their everyday life, Lord, that they can build altars in their life, God. And even if they don't have it right now, God, that they might begin working at it and one day at a time build an altar that is pleasing to you, God. Now, I ask that you dismiss all of us from this, this moment, God, from this message, Lord, and you be glorified to every single person. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Bobby, man, thank you. Uh, 
thank you for taking the time to be here with us and thank you for bringing this this fire so bless you guys thank you thank you amen amen so uh we'll keep in touch and hope to uh, hope to have you back on soon amen i'm more than willing amen so God God, god bless guys we love you so we'll see you next next week peace peace